Thank you for joining us, Richard. Now, Iolas is an independent power producer under the Power Africa Initiative. Tell us more about this initiative. Uh, we were approached uh, by uh, the USA team here in, um, in Nairobi uh, about becoming a, uh, a um, founding member of the uh, Power Africa Initiative, um, an initiative s started by President Obama uh, last year on a visit to Tanzania. Um, under our WIND project, we, we then sort of um, fit that banner as a uh, Power Africa Initiative. We're using American technology, as in GE technology. Um, and so we, we became a member, and, and that membership uh, is really about helping um, develop power projects across renewable and clean power projects across uh, East Africa. Your flagship project is the development of a wind power project in Kenya's Rift Valley dubbed the Wind Park. In terms of capacity, how much will it be contributing to the national grid? The, in, in wind, uh, and, and our project is a, is a 60 megawatt uh, wind project, as you say, um, 38 turbines. We will generate a, um, a nameplate of 60 megawatts, but actually when the wind blows, your, your capacity is going to be some percentage of that full value. And um, in, in the five years, six years that we've been collecting wind data, we believe that our next net capacity factor to the grid will be 40% of that at any one time. So you're looking at 40% uh, um, you know, uh, of 60 megawatts at any one time. Your expected completion date is 2015. Do you think this target is achievable? We've uh, contracted um, uh, one of the largest EPC contractors in the world, specifically in wind, a company called Iberdrola uh, Engineering. Uh, they're a Spanish outfit. Uh, they have something like 5,000 megawatts of their own power in the United States that they've developed. Um, they are a global leader in this, and they're pretty convinced that uh, they can deliver in, uh, in an 18, 19 month period. As an independent power producer, what are some of the incentives that the Kenyan government have provided for you to invest the over 150 million U.S. dollars? Uh, the, the government set up, um, and, and we're, we played a, a significant role in how the tariff uh, uh, evolved under the feed-in tariff policy. We, our project falls into the feed-in tariff policy, and uh, um, in our negotiations with the government for our tariff, uh, we had to demonstrate the reasons our particular wind regime would, would need the kind of tariff that uh, we've asked. And, and so we've, we've secured um, a, a good tariff with the government under the feed-in tariff policy. The government also provides a, um, uh, a Government of Kenya support letter, which, which in effect backstops the project, so it allows um, our debt uh, and equity providers to step in, knowing that they have some backstop to this. And, and there are, there are lots of components to keeping uh, the financing as cheap as possible uh, and yet still making it a, an attractive uh, proposition. Speaking of financing, when it comes to funding renewable energy ventures, most financial institutions are risk of us. As a case study, how did you manage to get their backing? It's been a struggle. It's been, it has been a, a journey for us. Um, part of the journey is, is putting together a, 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 uh, a very well technically structured project, uh, proving that the wind resource is there, um, bringing in a strong EPC contractor like Iberdrola, making sure that the turbine is global, global leading and the GE turbine uh, is probably one of the best in the world, uh, if not the best. Um, and then getting the support of these companies to provide that um, technical know-how, both during construction and um, post-construction and, and operation. Because it's, it's all good and well to build it, but now you need to manage it. And, uh, and the resources in this country are, uh, are going to be grown at, on the back of our project. And so Kenyans will, will be employed to, to learn and, and maintain um, these, uh, these uh, turbines. Now, African countries are gradually embracing the issue of power pooling. As an expert, what do you think should be done to sort of fast track this process considering power shortages are a perennial challenge? I think the struggle is, is um, infrastructure. Uh, I think the, the African continent as a whole um, suffers from poor infrastructure. And, and poor infrastructure is, is roads, ports, power, water, sewage, the basic things that need your economy to grow. Um, in, in terms of, of uh, delivering the, that infrastructure, it's expensive stuff. You know, we're, the Kenyan government is negotiating with Ethiopia and 
interconnect. Uh, it's not a cheap thousand kilometer line. It's an it's a, it's a expensive proposition. And that's just one line. And we, we want to try and create a East African power pool, which means that the distribution network needs to be put in place. Uh, it's an expensive proposition, and, and it requires strong leadership at the government level, strong participation from the private sector, and, and from, the, from the GFIs and, uh, and the World Bank. Uh, and, and they are at work. Then, then it's capacity building uh, within, within, the, within those nations and training people to, to uh, implement.